Okay, hello everyone. We're going to talk about another way to find the volume, and this is called the Lasher method. Now, the, this method can be extended to figure out volume of other type of figures. A washer is this. The washer or the area of the washer can be found by subtracting the area of the whole from the area of the entire region. So if I look at this, I have the radius that goes from the center to the outside. I'm going to call that big R because it's a big radius. And I also have to figure out the radius of this inner circle. There's a hole in the middle of the disk. And for this, I'm going to call little r because it's a small radius. So I'm going to have a big R and a little r. And so if we ask you to find the area of the shaded region, I'm going to get the area of the whole thing, pi r squared, minus the area of the whole, another pi r squared. And so I'm going to write that out here. The area of this washer is pi r squared, remember that's the radius of the large circle, minus pi r squared, which is the area of the small circle. And so this will give me the area of the shaded region. Now, because we know algebra, I could factor out a pi, and I'm left with big R squared minus little r squared. And this will give me the area of the shaded region. So in the section before, we had a disk. There was no hole in the middle. So we just did pi r squared. For a washer, we have to take into account that hole in the middle. So you're going to have a big radius and a little radius. And so that will give me a little formula to worry about when I'm asking you to find the volume. When I rotate and I end up with a hole in the middle, the volume, oops, volume I said, volume is equal to pi, just like before, I'm able to factor out that constant, the integral from a to b. I have a big radius squared minus a little radius squared dx. And I am in dx just like before because I have a horizontal axis of revolution. I'm going to have a big radius, a function in x, second power, a little radius, another function of x to second power. And if I'm given a vertical axis of revolution, well, it, it'll be somewhat similar. Let me separate. I'm going to have a pi outside. I'm going to go from vertical from C to D. I have a big radius in terms of Y. I have a little radius in terms of Y dy. So I need to square the big radius. I need to square the little radius, subtract them. And then don't forget about the pi. I'm going to practice this. I have a washer when I have a hole in the region where I'm rotating. Well, let's look at the first example. It's already drawn. I am asked to find the volume of solid formed by revolving the region bounded by square root of x, which is this. And x squared, y equals x squared, which is this. And I'm rotating that about the x axis. So my horizontal, my axial revolution is horizontal. So just like before, 
If I have a horizontal axis revolution, I'm going to be in dx. Let me write that down. And as I try to rotate that, the word gets a bit funky. When I rotate this, um, let's see now. Can you see that? I want you to see that this rotation is going to create a hole in the graph. It's going to be this space here in the middle that I'm creating a hole. And if I have that hole in the middle, that's going to have a washer. Now, I will try to grab a washer here. That's the, that's the hole. Ooh, that's ugly. And that's the entire washer things to think about. Because I have a hole in the middle, I need to figure out the big radius, which goes right there. That's the big radius. And I need to worry about the little radius, which goes from the axial revolution to that first curve, the little r. So the big radius, which I will draw over here, let me write it out. Big radius is from here to that curve. Well, that curve is really rad x. The little radius is from the axis of the revolution to that curve, and that curve is x squared. Got to keep track of which curve is which. And when I find the volume, I'm using my formula. It's right there. I have a pi. Let me look at my limits. Where am I going? I'm going from 0 to 1. I need to get the big radius and square it minus the little radius and square that one. Now take a look. Make sure you agree. That is the big radius to a second power and that's the little radius to a second power. Now, when you square that one, okay, that one's nice, x. And when you square this, well, that's going to be x to the fourth power. So, I invite you to pause, integrate. I don't want to do the baby work for you. The volume should be 3 pi over 10, according to my math. But again, verify, make sure you're getting 3 pi over 10. Okay, that was a horizontal axial revolution. I was in dx. Let's find a vertical axial revolution. Well, look, we have a vertical axial revolution. I'm asked to graph y equal x squared minus 1, y equal 0, x equal 1, x equal 2. And I'm going to rotate about the y axis. So let me start graphing, sketching what I have. You can pause the video right now, do a little sketch. x squared minus 1, it's a parabola. Here at negative 1, at 1. I'm going to plug in a 2, I end up with 3. So I have a curve that goes like that. y equals 0 is this, y equals 0 is the x-axis, y equals 0 x equal 1 and x equal 2. That's 2. So what I see is that I get a region at x equal 2, at x equal 1. I have this curve going up to parabola shape and then I have this. y equals 0. So I guess I don't need this part down here. That is the region that I'm rotating. It is a curve, y equals 0, x equal 1, and x equal 2. So that's the region. And I'm asked to rotate that about the y-axis, which creates vertical axis of revolution, which I'm going to be in dy. If I'm in dy, i got to make sure I go and solve that equation over there for dy. Just keep that in mind. 
as I rotate this whole land on this side. And I'm doing this freehand. You know it's a mess. I'm doing it freehand. And if I rotate this over here, I'm definitely going to have the bigger space in the middle. And that bigger space in the middle will tell me it is a washer. And because of the washer, I need to take into account the big radius and the little radius. So the big radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to there, to the outside. That is the big radius. The little radius is from the axis of revolution to the inside curve. That little radius, we call that little r. So I have a big R and little r. The big R goes from here to here. And if I look at that, I know that's 2. So I can figure out that the big R is 2. The little r, however, is from there to that curve. And I will remind you, I have to be in terms of y. So I need to go back and solve that equation for y, this curve. You come over here, do a little bit of algebra. y plus 1 is equal to x squared, which means that taking the square root is x. So x is equal to the square root of y plus 1. That will be the small radius. Big radius. To there to the outside curve which was 2 little radius to the inside curve which we had to solve for the y but there it is so I'm going to set it up as a volume pi I am integrating in terms of y so look at the graph that we did in terms of y from 0 to that number Big radius squared minus little radius squared with a dy. That'll be nice. It will go away. The radical and the square will go away. That'll give me a 4. And I will not integrate. I just wanted to make sure that you're careful with that minus there when you're distributing the minus into that. Okay? Um, honestly, I don't even know what the answer is, but I'll let you figure that out. So, um, I'm going to stop right there. There are more examples here. You have these in your note. It is the same graph. Part A rotating about the x-axis. Part B about the y-axis. I want you to try those and I'll probably put those in another video.